Hi there. In this session, we're going to look at the basic features uh, within the SPSS package. By the end of the session, uh, you should be able to navigate around SPSS. You should be able to create variables, add data, delete data, and most importantly, because you never want to lose your work, save your file. OK, when we open up SPSS, we're confronted with this particular um, screen. Now, in most cases, we don't need to open an existing data source, particularly if we haven't got uh, a um, data sheet written. So we click on Cancel, and our interest is really to build one. Now, I just want to draw your interest to uh, these two bars down here at the bottom. We have Data View, and we have Variable View. And these really form the uh, crux of the program particularly with regard to storing our data and creating variables to store our data for. Variable view um, is where we create variables. Data view is where we enter the data for those variables. Just before we do stuff with that, I just also want to just draw your attention to this top ribbon here. This is basically where everything in SPSS gets done. We use the file function to save our work. Um, we use edit to um, review our variables. We use transform to um, change variables that we already have in the data set, maybe uh, work out missing values for, for variables we don't have uh, or cases we don't have um, data for. Um, and this is the most important one, analyze. This is where all of the um, analysis functions in SPSS occur. As I said before, though, I just want to really start with a basic example of how you would input data. OK, so in this view here, notice variable view. In this view here, this is where we add our variables in. Now, what I mean by this is we've got the um, questionnaire sitting in front of us. And we see that the first question in that questionnaire is gender. We can add a gender variable as our first variable into the data set. Now, the numbers that run down these rows here, these represent our variables that we're going to add. So if we've got 1 to 19 uh, highlighted, this means that we've probably got 19 variables in our, um, or questions in our, in our um, questionnaire. We're only going to concern ourselves with one question today. Um, as I already said, that's gender. And we need to find a name for this particular variable. And this is how it's going to be displayed in the data set. So it needs to be something that we can uh, reconcile quite easily with our questionnaire. Now, some people, me being one of them, likes to put the numbers for the questionnaire as the name. So we call it Q1. As soon as I click off of this particular box, SPSS creates the variable and uh, fills us in with all this information that we can go on and do. Now, I'll quickly just uh, provide a tour of what these things are. The type of variable really differs between whether it's numeric or string. Now, with string data, this might be something that we've used an open coded box for, saying, so, you know, give us your opinion on so and so, and they're allowed to write a couple of paragraphs about that. Okay? If we want to do that, and that's what Q1 was about, which it isn't, but if it was, we would click on the box here at the bottom, mark string, and we can change the number of characters that the database is going to hold. Now, if it's a couple of paragraphs, it's probably worth putting a thousand, something like that in. Uh, if it's just a postcode um, or an age, we only need a few characters. In this situation, we're dealing with numeric data, like we will in many cases, particularly in statistics. Therefore, we click numeric and then click OK. We don't have to worry too much about width and decimals. That will work itself out for us. That's fine. We need to give a name or a label to our variable. Now, this is very important if we haven't identified it in Q1. Um, and I like to put the actual question itself. What is your gender? Question mark. Something just as simple as that. We're going to need that when we do our analysis because it will tell us what that variable actually is. Now, most of the time, we need to assign numbers, codes to variables and their categories. Okay? This is where our coding book comes in handy. We essentially add the values for our coding book into the values for our variable view and our variables in this particular screen. 
At the moment, we haven't got anything uh, coded for question one. I know that one equals male and two equals female, but we need to add that in here. Do exactly the same as before, I click down. I can add one, and I write male, click return, add, two females, and add. Notice here that I've made a little mistake. I can change that by clicking on it, making that change by deleting it and making it female, and then clicking change. If I want to remove either of these, delete them, I just click on the remove box there. Otherwise, I can click OK. Now, often we have missing data, and by clicking on this um, uh, box here, it opens up the following screen. Now, this is quite important. Um, I always think it's good practice to provide a um, unified code for missing data. Now, I always choose something that isn't very common, isn't likely to come up organically in the data set, uh, so I could choose minus 99. And I can write that here underneath discrete missing values, so minus 99. This says that whenever the number minus 99 comes up, SPSS knows it's missing data and it reports it as missing data, um, not as um, a code that just hasn't been completed. Okay, and that adapts all of our um, descriptive statistics, quite important. Okay, now the rest isn't so much of a big deal, columns and a line. Uh, but it's good practice to uh, choose the right measure whether we're using nominal or ordinal scale data. Now I know in this situation it's nominal, so I click on nominal. So what have we done? Essentially we've created a, a new variable, question one, which is asking people their gender. And we have to use that to add data about that from our questionnaires. If we go into the data view window, you can see before we had variables going down the side, now we have cases, i.e. they're representing questionnaires. So that's the first questionnaire, this is the second questionnaire, that's the third questionnaire. You can also see that question one, our new variable, is the first variable in the data set, now that makes sense. We can start adding variables, uh, sorry, we can start adding data to our variables by using this box. Now if I look at the first questionnaire, I know that that person is female, go to being female. If I go to the variable view pane, up, look at values, uh, a two represents being female, and therefore in this box here, I have to add a two. This is now saved, and when we go and do some analysis, it rep recognizes that for question one, which is gender, um, the first person is in fact a female. Say I want to delete that particular case. I highlight it by just clicking on the side. Go to edit and click on clear and it will disappear. SPSS tells me there's no more cases in the data set. We only had one and I've removed it and that's absolutely fine. If we want to save our data set, it's very much like saving a Word document. We go File, Save As, and we choose a location we want to save it in with a memorable name so that we can access our data at a later time.